Welcome back to Raised by Giants live discussion. Welcome everyone in the chat. Good to see you guys and any moderators and members out there. We have a very amazing discussion for you guys here this evening with returning guest MK Ultra, Monarch Survivor, whose congressional testimony was censored under national security in 1995. Her book, Transformation of America, also published in 95 with intelligence insider Mark Phillips, outlines exactly what took place. Kathy O'Brien, welcome back to the show. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's always good to be back and, and, and talking with you. Yeah, we have a slight delay in our uh, interactions here. Uh, the internet is a little slow, so uh, audience just bear with us. We'll make it through though. So Kathy, I'm very excited to see you. Always lovely chatting with you, uh, though the subject matter can be dark at times, but it's always a very important discussion to have. And I think that a really good place to start since you haven't been on at all this year, and my channel's grown quite a bit since you were on last, we're going to start with the basics here. What is Monarch MK Ultra, Kathy? It's a multi generational uh, mind control project that um, is based on the Hitler Himmler research that was imported into the United States in the wake of World War II, when we brought in the Nazi fascist scientists into the U.S. through Project Paperclip, with them came the formula for mind control. And mind control is the same, whether it's of an individual, a nation, or the world. And trauma is the basis of it. If that trauma is multi-generational, it creates even a stronger compliance, which is exactly what the this mind control is about is to create a compliant society for what Adolf Hitler, George Bush, and Joe Biden term the new world order. That's a slave society agenda. What is the goal of, well, you just mentioned a slave society, but what is the goal of Monarch MK Ultra? We've gone over a few of the different roles before on the show, like mis and disinformation agents programming, assassination programming, like Project Spellbinder, uh, sex pro programming, like Operation Midnight Climax. What is the ultimate goal with these programs? Um, it creating mind control society because these handful of puppet masters at the top, this dark cabal, dark energy force, whatever title we want to give them, are a very low vibration, negative energy force that we share this planet with. They're not like us and they do not like us. And they know that we would not comply with their agenda um, by choice. So they use mind control to make us compliant. And every one of these projects feeds into it and it is, goes into specific areas. And many of them have become multi-generational now when you consider how many years it has been since Project Paperclip and the mind control agenda being imposed slowly on society. You know, mind control is a sliding scale from the kind of torturous robotic mind control I experienced to information control. And we all formulate our thoughts, our opinions, and our actions based on what we know. And we need to know that knowledge base has been deliberately altered for a long, long time to keep us looking outside ourselves to this self-appointed, self-anointed cabal. These so-called authorities the big government, big pharma, big tech, big cult to cult religion to tell us how to live our lives. We've been conditioned to that for generations now. And every project that you mentioned, all those mind control projects all fall somewhere in that sliding scale, in that range. And it's something we need to start factoring into the equation as people wake up from the indoctrination and manipulation that we've all endured. I've heard a few people suggest, Kathy, that Monarch MK Ultra, uh, specifically Monarch MK Ultra, is a program mostly used on people in Hollywood, like musicians and actors and 
film directors and such. Is that true to your understanding? Absolutely it is. And it is because, you know, the any knowledge-based belief system or abuse base becomes autogenic in the brain after three generations. That's how um, talent is passed down generation to generation and language and um, skills and, and why doctors run in families, you know, it's because of this natural multi-generational aspect where it becomes autogenic in the brain. Actors are certainly, certainly fall into that category. They usually run in families and it usually is with also generational abuse because um, that trauma, the abuse creates compliance. And after three generations, people are born more compliant and suggestible and easily led, which makes perfect for um, the entertainment industries, music, um, acting, what, whatever. So many, so many aspects of our society have been infiltrated with the multi-generational mind control projects. It's really interesting because I just watched this Netflix documentary called uh, The Programs, Cons, Cults, and Kidnapping. I'm not sure if you're aware of this Netflix documentary yet or not, but it's basically revolves around these uh, teen behavioral health programs, these teen behavioral health schools where they basically come in and uh, their parents pay this agency to come in and kidnap their children and they'll take them to one of these behavioral health facilities where in watching this documentary, it seems like this documentary on Netflix, it seems like what they were going through is a MK Ultra type of programming. They would be made to repeat phrases over and over again. They would use uh, Kubrick, uh, Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey, the, the opening music of that. Uh, the, of that film to essentially, you know, psychically drive these kids and these children. And it's just horrific, the things in this documentary and the uh, abuse that these, uh, these children suffered. And uh, it really made me think of you a lot in uh, your testimony as well. And that's why I wanted to have you back on. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this documentary or not. I'm not familiar with that documentary, and but I'm I'm really happy to see so many of them coming out right now, and people people like yourself having the eyes to see, you know, exactly what's going on because you know, uh, behavioral health, you know, <laughs> they usually put a a an, a name that sounds um, all good or whatever just to fool people when in fact it has nothing to do with mental health at all. It has to do with controlling the mind. There's so many um, aspects of that are in our school system right now. And it's something that people are becoming more and more aware of every day. So, um, you know, anytime we look outside ourselves for someone else to tell us how to behave and how to act and how to be, there's a, the, a great chance we're going to be led outside of ourselves, away from our truth, away from our purpose, away from our free thought, free will, soul expression. So, um, we need to be aware of that. Knowledge is our defense against mind control, and that awareness is definitely rising. And with it is coming some significant um, documentaries, series, and exposés that um, I'm really happy to see are, are raising awareness even further. Yeah, I was uh, I was really shocked that this was on uh, Netflix as well. Whenever I started watching it, that was a trailer there. I don't want to get hit with a with a copyright for playing the trailer, but I was really surprised when I was watching it because, like, that's literally what happened to a lot of these children. And it started in the '70s with this uh, wilderness retreat in Utah where they would come in, the parents would pay for their children, for their children to be abducted essentially, and then taken to Utah to go out in the wilderness in this like wilderness retreat for 60 days. And then it snowballed and continued. And then it turned into like these schools and they're basically MK ultra behavioral modification schools. 
Yeah. Is what they are. They're abusing these children. They're mind. They're, they're, I mean, so in a few of the documentaries, they're like, yeah, we're like reprogramming these kids' minds. Like we're breaking them down and we're re implanting things into their head. And I'm like, that is MK Ultra. Completely. It's been, um, it's been coming out in a lot of different directions too. You know, when we even just look at back um, when I was, when I was a kid, any child that wasn't cooperating the way they were supposed to were sent off to boot camp and the military and how they put them back in line. And then those boot camps expanded and then they became these, these, um, these kind of places like what you're referring to. There's so many different ways that people are being manipulated and they need to realize that if we're allowing our kids to have their behavior modified that way, rather than taking the time to, um, you know, help them through their issues, then they're going to end up under government control. Yeah. And that was the thing about this documentary. It mostly focuses on this place called Ivy Ridge in upstate New York. And a lot of the uh, survivors that were in the documentary and talking about it was like, listen, I wasn't a bad kid. This whole thing was just completely blown out of proportion. Like, yeah, I would smoke every once in a while or drink every once in a while, but I was not what it wasn't anything to cause the course for me to be sent to one of these facilities. Right. And, and they also had, this was another really interesting thing too, Kathy, is they also had the parents, like it was like a cult. Like they, they had the parents as well. Like they, they had the parents, MK Ultra too to like go along with it. And they would have like these little group get togethers like every month. And they would be like standing in a circle and like blindfolded and like chanting and like doing weird meditations and cross dressing and like all this weird stuff. And I'm like, holy crap, it wasn't just the kids. They also had the parents as yeah, well. There, there we go with the multi-generational effect again. This has been going on behind the scene for so long that it has become multi-generational. Monarch has become very pervasive, whether it's deliberately Project Monarch MK Ultra or not, the Methodisms have certainly um, permeated our society. We even get the multi-generational indoctrination in the school system where the, um, the people are taught um, misinformation because if that knowledge base is altered so too will all their thoughts opinions and actions so you know history has been rewritten and it's been rewritten to promote the slave society agenda and after so many generations the parents become more compliant and allow the children to be indoctrinated and so it goes and now we've reached this this horrific proportion of the schools raising the kids, saying they have more power than the parents and forcing um, their indoctrination on the children to the point where they're even now forcing them to have um, surgery for the transgender agenda. The pedophile agenda is a mind control agenda and the transgender one it ta is taking it to the next level and the next step to include depopulation agenda through stopping um, human procreation. Do you think a lot of that is due to social media as well? Because I think social media plays a big role in the, uh, the, the overall blanket of what they're trying to achieve. You know, like social media is a, is a hindrance in like a lot of ways and children and kids, they, they get phones as seems like soon as they come out of their mother's womb, <laughs> they got a phone or a tablet in their hand, yeah. Kathy, you know what I mean? Like, what is that doing to their brain? And I don't think there's been enough time span for us to do the right research and the right uh, effects that that's having on our children to always be, uh, you know, looking at a device, you know, and then that's like training them to, not have good communication skills as training them not to be able to talk the way that they feel. So it's, it's becoming like a, uh, and, and I understand the reasons why some parents do that. It's so that, you know, they can just 
you know, let their kids behave, you know, here's a phone, here's a tablet, here's some kind of computer, like, don't bother me, you know, but that, that's the opposite of what we should be doing for our children. And I, I believe that technology and social media plays a huge role in that. It always has, you know, even back with, with television, sitting the kids in front of the television, and they'd be subjected to um, subliminal manipulation through Disney to promote a pedophile agenda all along. And we look at Disney and um, his relationship and Project Paperclip, and it's easy to see that it's not just um, a concept, it's a very deliberate effort that's been going on a long time. Plus, as we said earlier, you know, um, repetition is the most basic form of mind control. You were saying that about how they were having the kids repeat the same thing over and over. Well, that repetition is a basic form of mind control. And it's why the controlled media narrative is the same. You know, no matter what we listen to, there is. When we switch over to social media, we get the same thing because that, that narrative is being controlled. And it's been shortened and shortened. We got the kind of news that came in and now we get these little texts, you know, where they just um, blurp, a type out of, usually a snap judgment of somebody that has no no basis of research or thinking or anything else, but just rather reaction, snap judgment, you know. And it's it's created a, um, a, a, a different way of thinking altogether, which when combined with the overwhelming amount of information being, you know, pumped in through the the cell phones and the devices all the time, you know, we're sitting in front of them. It's like, Mark always said it was like uh, drinking from a fire hose, you know, it's just so much, it's too much to even take in and process properly. So, um, yeah, so, you know, it's um, definitely having its effect on society and our brains were not equipped to take in that much information. Now, you just mentioned the psychological effects of uh, MK Ultra, and now what is the process of that? Because people have this idea that it's a, uh, it's a physically torturous process, which I don't doubt that it is, but I would imagine it's just as much psychological torture because they want to break down your mind in order to implant thoughts, ideas, and beliefs into it so and i'm sure that you experienced both i'm sure you've experienced the, the physical torture along as the the, the mental um, torture as well would that be correct absolutely it's because information on our own mind brain function you know our birthright information has been suppressed under national security ever since the inception of the National Security Act in 1947, so that information could be uh, suppressed and we could be manipulated by the formula for mind control. Again, trauma is the basis of it. And the reason trauma is the basis of it is because it's the way our brains respond to any trauma, any fear, any torture, anything like that. Our conscious mind freezes in fright and leaves our subconscious mind wide open to being easily led and manipulated. Our subconscious mind just takes information in. It doesn't critically analyze it, it doesn't process it, nothing. It just takes information in. Without our conscious mind filter, then we're just highly suggestible and the information gets pumped into the subconscious mind. So it is a psychological manipulation, whether it's physical torture, uh, fear tactics, no matter what the, the, the trauma, the point being that it freezes the conscious mind in fright so that the subconscious is heightened suggestibility for being manipulated. And that's ultimately, you know, all they're going for and what they want. When we lose our free thought, when we lose that conscious mind filter, then um, we become very shallow in our thinking. We don't have a capacity to gather any soul expression. It separates us from that because it's in that soul expression where we have a moral compass that you know helps us navigate through life and, and drive 
and drives us in, in um, ways of, of critical analysis and, and um, free will choice. But without that, you know, when we just start thinking so shallow based on what's pumped into the subconscious mind, taking that information in, we're not gathering that, um, that moral compass, which means we can be misled down a very immoral path without even being aware of it because that conscious mind is what makes us aware. So we need to understand our own mind brain function. And then it's easy to see how we're all being manipulated in some form or another right now. I agree. Um, now I know we've spoken about this before, but it's important to talk about again, uh, you know, reading through the MK ultra unclassified documents and the 149 sub projects and a handful of them were dedicated to psychic research and psychic phenomena, psychoenergetics. Now is developing or unlocking psychic abilities or uh, increased intuition uh, a automatic byproduct of the MK Ultra process? Well, yeah, absolutely, because I ended up with um, so much compartmentalized memory where the neuron pathways in the brain actually physically shut down around the trauma so the rest of the mind can function normally. Again, normal mind-brain function. But nevertheless, um, when you have so much compartmentalized repress trauma, then the firing of the neuron pathways in the brain. When the conscious mind is lost, there's no continuity of thought between, you know, the compartmentalized memory, the, the neuron pathways being shut down to the degree that they absolutely intend with MK ultra mind control. And once that free thought is lost, it's like the brain compensates for it in other ways. Like when um, a blind person develops heightened hearing, then without the ability for conscious free thought, then um, other aspects of the brain kick in, like heightened intuition and stronger senses, telepathic abilities, um, psychic abilities, and uh, a lot of other things that our brains are actually capable of, even though it was a negative that thrust me into those areas. It's really exciting to know that our brains are capable of that. And if we just remember who we are and why we're here, we get to have that for ourselves. That can be manipulated from the outside. Imagine what we can do by driving it from within with our strength of spirit, and that infinite power of love and that, that moral compass that we have we can use it on such extreme good. It's something now that I am healed from my MK Ultra experience, I've retained and I continue to use in a most positive way. And it, and it certainly is exciting. Yeah, it's really interesting that because some people seem like that they're born with certain gifts and, you know, certain abilities that they've been able to develop, but then in other ways, so a lot of people, they've had those abilities kind of damp, dampened down and they've sort of kind of forgotten that they even had them in the first place. And it seems like that trauma is unfortunately a way to unlock those abilities. And I say unfortunate with uh, emphasis. <laughs> Yeah, I, I also think, you know, it, it, people can be born with those abilities through the multi-generational aspects. You know, if, if I hadn't been abused as an infant, um, I still would have been highly suggestible, easily led and had heightened intuitions and, and capabilities. I think that, um, that we're all born with those abilities and then life gets in the way. You know, we get bombarded with these rules, these regulations this is what we do, because in so many ways we get conditioned to um, come the way society is structured or whatever. And it leads us again out of ourselves and away from those gifts that we have within. If we just return to um, our birthright uh, capabilities and information, all access that to some degree 
and um, enjoy the benefits of it. Do you think that the CIA uh, or whoever was running these MK Ultra programs, because some people say DARPA, some people say CIA, we know that the Air Force was involved in running some of these programs. Do you think that they knew that running this MK Ultra would unlock these uh, psychoenergetic abilities, or do you think that that was something that they found out about during the course of? doing the program because it almost seems like that those abilities could also be weaponized as well. I, I think it took them a long time to discover that. Um, and it was just so many of the survivors uh, would, would have those abilities and they finally started catching on to it and then started manipulating it. There's um, I, I find that there's a lot of, um, ignorance still from the intelligence community, those directions, because the human potential is more than they can think to weaponize because they're doing it from a, a criminal aspect and their criminal linear thinking does not allow for the kind of wisdom and depth and capability that we actually are capable of. So there's so much more that we can uh, share with each other than they could ever think to access. Who else would you be aware of that were doing these MK Ultra experiments? We know the CIA, I just mentioned DARPA uh, and the Air Force. Any other intelligence organization or military branch uh, that you would be aware of that could have possibly be doing these types of MK Ultra experimentations in the past or now? Yeah, and, and so it's gone way beyond experiment into you know full blown projects, and a lot of the intelligence communities are involved in that. But NASA is definitely involved, and then you have um, organizations like the Jesuits, which is the intelligence arm of the Vatican, very very criminal. They long since learned about the effects of on the human mind through the Spanish Inquisition and the Crusades. And then they saw the spoils of war, the children and the Catholic orphanages were born and notorious for being mind control epicenters and places of horrific abuse. And the whole pedophile agenda within the Catholic Church was allowed to proliferate because of the mind control aspects and what they knew about the effect on the human mind. And even with all that said, I'm not saying all that bad, that's absurd. You know, there's good and bad and everything. But the Jesuits and the Catholics, the Vatican has long since been heavily involved in this mind control agenda for what they stumbled upon back in their um, violent days of trying to um, promote the church. You know, I mean, anytime you promote a religion with war, it doesn't make any sense anyway. You know, it's true. But nevertheless, they they were actively involved, led to others being actively involved too. The Mormon church, um, many um, aspects of it have been heavily and deliberately involved in adding to it a, a technological aspect that's been brought in through harmonics and everything else within the Mormon church. So there's a lot of human trafficking, child sex trafficking that happens through that. And again, you know, not to say that all moves are bad, but the ones who are good need to open their eyes and stop the infiltration that has permeated their um, their cult. Is Scientology in any way linked to MK Ultra? Because there's been a lot of mass exodus from Scientology and uh, a lot of documentaries that have been made about people leaving Scientology and the, the cult-like behavior that is behind Scientology. Um, is there any connections there between MKUltra and Scientology? Absolutely. And that was a, a major one going into to Hollywood, it's real pervasive. So, you know, we can consider the aspect too. And there's um, the Jehovah's Witnesses right now, there's mass exodus 
from there too, where the people are starting to realize, wow, you know, we've been manipulated and let outside ourselves for a long time. So um, the, it was my experience in uh, MK Ultra mind control work in a White House Pentagon level that there were a lot of various religions that were being used to work those um, black budget operations, the drug making that CIA was involved in. And these churches would just send their, um, their cult members on missions. And those missions would um, be, you know, intelligence missions that actually um, involved a lot of criminal activity. And they would have no idea and they would come back and, and think maybe they had done something good for the poor little children in Haiti. You know, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's been going on that way for a long, long time. And we need to realize the most sacred and beautiful things in our lives have been infiltrated. Above all, the education system is indoctrinating our children. We better wake up to that one real fast. Now, Ken, I know we've spoken about this before, but again, I think it's important to bring up um, and talk about again. Can MK Ultra be used in a way to make you believe something happened when it didn't really happen? It they they attempt that, and in in my experience, I was manipulated that way. And there's such a thing that can be implanted false memory, but there's a way to um, to to know the way around that to be able to um, heal from that and discern that. And it begins with deprogramming the program first. And I'm so fortunate that Intelligence Insider Mark Phillips taught me all that right from the beginning and right from the get-go so that I could untangle any deliberate efforts to um, manipulate my mind. And even it even goes back into childhood in like in, in, in the Disney or, um, or Wizard of Oz in, in my was it real? It was a really spinning in that tornado, or was I being told that I was, you know? And and when you deprogram the program, you hear them saying, telling you that you're being spun. That's what is important for people to understand that we've got to deprogram the program first in order to start learning the truth. Um, with this ability, with this understanding comes um, discernment of truth again. And we all need to sharpen our discernment of truth because it's become um, s s deliberately blurred in order to uh, keep us from knowing our own truth. Is there a, did, were you ever, did you ever have like an extraterrestrial or like a, a UFO implanted memory, like a false implanted memory of like any kind of extraterrestrial or let's say a reptilian or a gray alien experience that you later found out was a false or fake implanted memory? Yes. The, um, George Bush senior had done, uh, the lizard alien theme and the 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 reason that um, the alien themes are used is because it makes us feel helpless, like it's beyond our realm to affect. When in fact, you know, it it's all within our realm to affect. And if we get the mind manipulation and the programming out of the way, we've got a lot to discover about our world and beyond, and 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 who we do share this planet with. You know, it's it's a uh, going to be amazing to get past the manipulations. But um, when Bush had told me that he was a, a lizard alien, um, why not? That's easy enough to believe. And to have seen a holographic illusion um, created at the time enhanced it that much more. But in the deprogramming process and writing out the memory and going into you know, how did I get there? Where did I go after asking myself the questions that Mark taught me that are in PTSD time to heal? I was able to go back and remember the setup to the situation and the event. So um, it was easier to see how that, um, how my mind had been manipulated in that regard. And it's very freeing to be able to untangle that kind of 
of of thing and still not toss out the concept that we share this planet with you know um intelligent life so they literally showed you a holographic image of a reptilian being and it made you led you to believe that that was real um, at the time, absolutely. Under MK Ultra, it's easy to it, it, you believe anything you're told, you know, right. and anything you're led to believe. So, um, yeah, I had been led to believe that, and um, am really pleased that I was able to discern not only that, but also, um, you know, satanic aspects too, because there's some very evil people using Satanism as a trauma base. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Aquino is definitely one and he was my primary mind control programmer so um this trauma base of satanism is also used because blood trauma is so horrific on the human mind the most horrific abuses the most um, horrific effects is sexual abuse of a child prior to age five while their brain is still forming and just right there with it is the um satanic abuse in the blood aspect because the the blood traumas are so uh, extreme so able to discern that and realize it was people you know it's like they need to be held accountable for their actions and their manipulation of us because they've gone full bore with it right now they've taken it so ridiculously far now yeah. what what were they trying to cover up within your mind by showing you this reptilian extraterrestrial this this holographic image of a, of a reptilian the the government involvement um and and who specifically was involved in um this mind control agenda being imposed on all of humanity through um this new world order effort you know what adolf hitler george bush and joe biden termed the new world order the great reset whatever we want to call it it's a slave society agenda and they just want us to feel helpless so like they were trying to use an extraterrestrial scapegoat so that you would go yes. out and tell people that this yes. was reptilians and it wasn't humans yes exactly <laughs> exactly and it takes people away from the truth you know because then it feels like oh nothing we can do about that well yes we can we need to hold these people accountable for their crimes against humanity and whether they're like us or not like us the point is they're here now and they are within our realm to affect. We just need to remember our own power, who we are and why we're here. I hope everyone uh, focused in on that section uh, right there because that is really powerful. And I've been saying that for a really long time that they're trying to scapegoat these extraterrestrials and these aliens and they're trying to put the blame on them when it has nothing to do with them. It's all humans doing it to other humans. And you just verified it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I've been trying to tell people that, Kathy, but they're not listening. Hopefully now they'll start listening because that's exactly what I've been trying to tell people. I mean, it's the perfect thing, something that you never really see, something that you can't prove exists that you can just pass the blame on to. And then while, all the while you're continuing to do exactly what you've been doing. Yeah, and it also traumatizes other people when survivors who have yet to heal, you know, are spewing that kind of, of information and, and it's very confusing to people and it dilutes the reality of that formula for mind control, which once we understand it, we evolve with that knowledge and we're no longer um, reachable because with knowledge, our defense, they we know exactly what to look for and what to avoid and how to maintain our own free thought, free will, soul expression. It's an important evolutionary time and truth is essential for helping people to remember um, who they really are and why they're here. It's really incredible when you think about the uh, the mythology of extraterrestrials and when it started and how it started and the government myths and disinformation surrounding all of it and then how these fairy tales and how this lore gets populated in people's consciousness. 
Yeah, That's you it. know, if we there's so many other aspects of intelligent life to be considering dimensionally and otherwise, but instead they went with the lizard theme because it, it, it also goes into the satanic theme, you know, the reptile, the snake, the, you know, the, this reptilian thing is a very primitive fear in the human brain. It was our survival mechanism from the onset. You know, we had to be able to, um, to uh, save ourselves from the, the reptilian aspect. So, um, you know, they, they tapped into the reptilian, which crosses over onto the religious just because it is a primitive innate fear and fear again is a basis of mind control what better thing to blame it on than a than a group of reptilians right yeah because <laughs> yeah. it, it's almost believable it's almost believable in a way you know when you start really thinking about it and you're hearing all these people talk about it but then when you realize that it's a program that's also being run on these people that are talking about it that are making it real and spreading that information to other people online then things really start to make a lot of sense it does and it also bogs us down into the lie instead of expanding our thinking into the genuine possibilities that are around us so and then that kind of gets propagated and turned into ufos being extraterrestrials and then alien abductions and uh gray aliens is kind of all morphed out of this this reptilian theme that really started hardcore in like the early 90s to mid 90s and now it's just completely evolved into something else it, it, we've taken it and we've morphed it and we've changed it and we've manipulated it and then turned it into gray extraterrestrials and palladians and octurians and all the galactic federation of light galactic federation of light is huge kathy it's like a huge big deal on youtube in in the spiritual community and we've just taken that and morphed it in, in with our own consciousness and turned it into something that it was never meant to be in the first place I, I think we've got to look to um, the mental health community too, because they've been kept in the dark for so long. The, 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 it's within us all to heal ourselves, just as I did. If I can heal from my life's experience from within myself, we all can. And when we heal from within, then we know the truth. But if we look outside ourselves um, and have someone manipulate our mind for us, like a hypnotist, how many of the alien abductions are, yes, I was in a hypnotic regression and I learned, you know, it's because the, the mind is being manipulated by an outside influence to guide the, um, guide you into false memory in, in, in essence, you know, it needs to, we need to remember um, our truth from within ourselves. The methods for doing it are very simple. They're in PTSD time to heal. They're easy to self-apply and they're easy because it's our birthright knowledge. It's what we used to have as our defense against this kind of um, trauma-based mind control. We need to reclaim that birthright information. And it begins with knowing the truth. But as long as we're looking to uh, miseducated, misinformed, or deliberately ill-informed um, therapists and 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 hypnotists to manipulate our our minds for us and tell us what our our past was then um we're, we're just being led further and further from the truth the truth is within us and we can remember it yeah and they just want to put you on a bunch of medication and drug oh, yeah. 24 7. now you just gave a few examples of one like the wizard of oz being a false implant in memory you being in the tornado the the reptilian theme i'm showing you a, a, a holographic image of a reptilian and uh and you believing that is there any other examples of false memory implantations uh that you can think of off of the top of your head that may be relatable for some people listening that they can be like, Oh man, uh, this sounds very similar. You know, I, I might've had this experience too. So they can try and break out of that, uh, that, that programming that they've been in. Yeah. Um, there's, I, I think there's, there's so many different variations of, um, the way that, that memory can be uh, manipulated and, um, and, and implanted 
that once we realize how to access the truth by writing it out, knowing where how we got there, listening to what's being said, who said it, what did they say, you know, writing it all out because um, when we write it out, we're opening the critical analysis logic part of the brain in order to move a pen. Typing doesn't do the same thing. I'm talking about, you know, moving a pen. And as we do it, we ask ourselves certain questions, including and especially, what is that smell? Because smell is an olfactory sense that is not part of watching television. It's not part of a holographic image. The smell is something that um, is a natural sense that helps very much with discernment. So that's something that people can, you know, ask themselves and, and look to. And it won't be just the smell of one thing, because um, even if we're smelling a rose and smelling flowers or whatever, there's still other other scents that um, come in to play. And that's a, a, a good way to be able to discern because false memory does not have scent. Yeah, I actually had a lady on that wrote a book about superhuman abilities, but not so much uh, superhuman abilities in the way of like psychic ability. I mean, some psychic abilities as well, but like superhuman smell, superhuman taste, superhuman hearing. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting. Because I think when people think of like, you know, superhuman abilities, they automatically go to the the mystical, you know, psychic reading your mind, you know, uh, telekinesis and, and stuff like that. But we also have other abilities, like sensing abilities, gut feeling abilities. We can have super smell, super hearing, super vision, I would assume. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the 44 times visual acuity, you know, just that, you know, we, we when um, someone's been traumatized so much, their eyes open wide and it's like they're looking for the, the trauma before it happens again, you know, and, and we can see people like that and start to identify them. They've got the whites around their eyes. Their eyes are just, you know, wide open. They're not blinking because they, they don't dare, but they get this peripheral vision that's 44 times visual acuity. And it's something capitalized on by the military so that they can point and shoot with pinpoint accuracy, you know, and it's, um, it's even used on uh, MK Ultra in sports, you know, to make sure the ball goes in the hole, you know, or whatever. Just because that visual acuity is such a strong um, capability and sense that that can heighten. And if it can heighten from outside influence, then we need to realize what we can do with it from within ourselves. We also have an ability for healing, for regulating our own blood flow. Um, regulating our pain levels, regulating um, things that if they can manipulate it from the outside, again, imagine what we can do from within ourselves when we remember that we have that capability. I think a good example would be how the military special forces can take a bullet and keep on going. They shut off the blood flow and they just keep going. And um, if that can be done through a program, and we still have that ability within us. And I, it's, it's one that, that I, have, I have used in, in situations, you know, where um, we can regulate our blood pressure, we can regulate our heartbeat, we can regulate our blood flow, and, um, and also our pain levels, because pain is an alarm system to tell us, hey, something's wrong, pay attention. Well, if you're already paying attention, you don't need that alarm to keep going off, you can shut it off, you know? And, and um and go about go about healing you, there's a lot of healing tricks that the brain can apply to you know where if the the pain is on the right side um just shift it over to the left in your mind and all of a sudden it, the the mind knows the pain's not really there and it shifts the whole the whole perception of pain away from um where where the 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 problem is and it actually accelerates healing by doing that so there's there's so many tricks that we can um that we can use that we're capable of but we forgot you know and 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 while we're allowing others to manipulate us far away from it and manipulate us from their outside input um we need to remember what what we're capable of we're, we we have been blessed with the most amazing and resilient body, mind, and spirit. And once we remember that, um, 
we've we've got a, a whole lot of positives that we can start enjoying in our lives. Yeah, sorry guys in the chat. I've been uh, just concentrated on uh, me and Kathy because we have a little disconnection in our in our connection, and I just wanted to make sure everything was going good and didn't want to concentrate too much on the chat. But thank you all for so much for being here. Really appreciate your time this evening, and I uh, haven't forgotten about you guys. We are live, so uh, you're still there. Now, there's something really interesting of what you were talking about that you can kind of shut off these pain receptors because I I don't know if it's true might be speculation. So no one quote me on it. Uh, theory right now, theory time. But I remember seeing this CIA document probably a couple of years ago where they had studied the physiological makeup of the human body. And they had these numbers that you could repeat that would do certain things to your body. Like you could repeat like a, a set of four to five different numbers for like pain. Like if you had a pain in a certain part of your body, you could just two, two, five, six, seven, two, two, five, six, seven. And you would keep repeating it over and over again. And apparently it would shut off the pain to that part of the body. Is that something kind of similar to what you're talking about? Again, no proof, just speculation. Well, it, 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 any Anything that, that that with a conscious mind distracting from it um, would would be helpful. So, um, yeah, there's 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 just so many abilities that we do have in the um, when we have our free thought, when we have our conscious mind to um, to to make choices, to make our choices, and um, the the numbers are you know they they definitely would work. That's that's something that that can be done, but. Um, it almost seems like in MK all train yourself to a, a degree, you know, because yeah, that's what that, they, <laughs> you know, it's like martial arts, a, a capability, yeah. and it's so different when we do it from within instead of um, allowing others to manipulate us for their own agenda. You know, we have a purpose to live here, we have an amazing um, reason for living this life and being here right now. We've all got something to contribute and share. And um, it's an amazing time to be alive, seeing people wake up to this reality and reclaiming their birthright information with the full realization it's been manipulated for such a long, long time. Yeah, I think that people that say, you know, um, well, times in the past are so much better than the times now. I, I disagree with that. I think that this is probably, in my opinion, the best time to ever be alive. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's very exciting. I, I personally believe, and I'm actually really excited for where things go in the, the future that we have, you know? I'm because excited too. Very, you know, I, I mean, I people wonder how I can smile after all I've been through. And it's like, because I see what's happening now, you know, this is so exciting. Seeing people wake up from uh, from so many generations of manipulation to reclaim their 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 own power and capacity um once we reclaim our own power it's it's game over we're not going to be manipulated anymore we evolve with that knowledge and we have some amazing directions to focus our lives going forward yeah hippie shakes got it i think the key to life is to be positive uh keep one's mind on a high vibration that's right and so many people are, um, you know, they have a, a lot of issues and a lot of problems because, you know, around their environment and the people that they have around them. You know, I think that's where a lot of the issues and depression and anxiety, which I'm not a doctor and a psychiatrist and not a therapist and none of that, but just being an observer, it, it seems like the conditions and the environment that some people are around fosters a um, a, a negative personality or uh, periods of negativity and sometimes long-term negativity and fear just by your living circumstances, just by being around the people that you're surrounded with. Exactly. And it, it, you know, it's something we all need to consider because we're being deliberately bombarded to keep our frequency low, to keep our vibration low, because these, this, this handful of puppet masters with their, um, slave society agenda 
are a low vibration, dark, negative energy force, and they feed off of low vibration. They can't gain anything off of a, a high vibration and, um, and, and love. And so that's why they use mind control to keep us from being able to think, to remember our own power and to access our choice to raise our vibration. Instead, we get bombarded with negativity, fear, trauma after trauma, you know, um, turning on the TV or anything else. And then whether we're affected by it or not, people around us may be. And then that can, that can start affecting us after a while. So I always suggest to everybody, you know, get outside, get in nature, shut off the devices, get away from everything and everybody for a while. Listen to nature, feel the, feel the wind on your skin, the sun on your skin, you know, um, breathe in the air and, and feel the earth beneath your feet, go barefoot, hug a tree, you know, listen to the, the birds and the squirrels and the, the wildlife around you and how they interact, you know, just reattune to that for a few minutes and it, it will change um, that, that effect of other people's influence and the technology and the harmonics and the, um, the, the frequencies that the devices emit, you know, all of a sudden we're reattuned back to the earth and it will raise our vibration and bring us back to um, who we're intended to be and the life we're intended to live. Yeah, and I think that some people, I think a lot of people, um, they think that they don't want to be alone, you know, but a lot of the the journey and the, the, the path that a lot of us are on is a lonely journey. And I think that some people think that, you know, they would rather have the negativity around them and the, the fear around them and the not good um, people around them because they don't want to be alone. And that's a, uh, that's a, and I understand that, you know, I, I get that, but I think that that's a really big thing too, is the, the loneliness of people and social media is just exacerbated that they've, uh, they, instead of having a human to human connection, now it's a it's a digital connection. And people are looking down at their phones all the time, and they'd rather be on their phone doing stuff on uh, all these social media platforms than having a conversation with the person in front of them. You know, like yeah. I'm, I'm sure you go out to dinner a lot, right? I'm sure, like I don't really eat out too much, but whenever I do, it always blows my mind that you'll see couples and people like sitting there and eating with each other. They're not talking to each other, you know. They're they're on their phone. They're they they have that disconnect in front of them. It's like there's a wall. There's like a, there's a barrier that's like right in front of their face. And I'm like, that's the most important thing right there is that connection with that other human being that you're around. Exactly, and 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 it's so important to get away from those devices because it's really shallow just to you know be sitting there typing an LOL when you could be communicating with someone there and it's a, a much more real form of connection the loneliness is um so much an imposed uh concept in 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 a, in a lot of ways being alone allows you to um, raise your vibration and when we raise our vibration and know who we are and take time for inner reflection take time away from the little nonsense, you know, and that kind of communication to, um, to go within, then it gives us a, a higher vibration and we draw that higher vibration to us. And that's where we have genuine connection with other people is when we're in a higher vibration state ourselves, because that's, um, you know, when we live the love we are, we draw love to us and and so it goes. And there is absolutely no loneliness in that vibe, you know. So and to uh, re take the time to reattach to it is only going to catapult us um, further from any genuine, um, any kind of sense of loneliness. 
Yes, and I think that that is a perfect place to end it, Kathy. Thank you so much. And really quickly before I let you go, thank you so much, uh, Sandra, for the seven ninety nine super sticker and your support and kindness and generosity of the channel. Really appreciate you. And Matthew, earlier for gifting five raised by a Giants membership, a longtime supporter of the show, Matthew, gifting those Writer Ranger channel memberships. Thank you so much. And if you're a Writer Ranger channel member, a new channel members only video will be dropping on Friday this week. And thank you so much uh, for your guys' support. It really means a lot to me. Kathy, where can uh, people find you online and where can uh, people purchase your book or watch your documentary? Um, everything's available on my website at trance-formation.com. That's T-R-A-N-C-E hyphen formation.com. I've got my books, my blog posts, my um, aud links to my audible books. I, I um, read all my books. I narrated them myself uh, to preserve the integrity of information. Uh, PTSD, Time to Heal is there. Everybody can apply it. Everybody can use uh, boost and reclaiming and retaining their free thought and expanding their thinking beyond what they think they know because we are all smarter than we think and we need to expand that thought. Thanks so much, Kathy. The links to Kathy's information will be in the description of this video. I highly recommend her books and her documentary as well. And thanks so much, everyone in the chat. Really appreciate you guys. And Sandra, Savage, Sam, uh, Mad Catter, good to see you guys. Thanks for being here. And Nina, uh, and please be sure to hit the thumbs up button to help the channel and the algorithm share, subscribe, hit the bell icon as well for notifications and uh writer Rangers channel member will be out on Friday. Okay. See you guys next time. Have a great week, everyone.